I'm Anne McMillan, and this is the Montessori Trinomial Cube. This is not a cube, it's a square. So, this is a trinomial square. This is the trinomial cube. Usually in Montessori, we look at our polynomials this way, with the smallest square in the top left corner, getting larger and larger as it goes down, down, down. And in the Montessori Elementary program, we even look at decanomials, as do some children in the primary programs using the decanomial square, which is an AMI material. So what is the equation for the trinomial cube? This again is just a trinomial square. A trinomial cube would have to have its equation written one layer at a time. So that means there would be a yellow cubed layer, a blue cubed layer, and a red cubed layer. And for each prism, there would be a term in the equation. So for example, the term for this prism would be a cubed. For this one, it would be b cubed. And for this one, it would be c cubed. But what about the prism that corresponds with this place on the map? Well, this prism would be a squared b. And in that layer, the yellow cubed layer, there would be two prisms called a squared b. And there would also be two prisms called a squared c. It's c because one length of this prism is the same size or the same length as one side of the red square. So this is a squared c, and there would be two of them in this layer of the trinomial cube. In this layer, we would also have this little, this little one that is b squared times a that would fit right here and still be the same height as the yellow cube. And of course, this one, which would be c squared a, which would fit right here and still be the same height as the yellow cube. And we'd have a couple of our full black prisms that would fit here and here, touching only the black, and they would both be a times b times c, because one length is the length of a, one side is the length of b, and one side is the length of c. So we'd have two a, b, c. So that would give us the equation for one layer of the trinomial cube. And then the second and third layers, their equation would be ascertained in the same way. Only we would start with b cubed and make sure all of the prisms that we were figuring out the name of had the same height as the b. And then we'd do the same thing for the third layer, the c cubed. And in the end, we'd have a long, long set of terms that could be simplified into a formula for a trinomial cube. 